In this video, we're going to learn about intercepts for linear equations. So first, let's get the vocabulary down. The x-intercept is defined as the point where a line crosses the x-axis. Remember that the x is the horizontal axis. Now, if you think about the coordinate plane, if you're anywhere on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is always 0. So when you're finding the x-intercept, you're going to look for points that always have a y-coordinate of 0. And then generically, we just kind of set up any x-intercept is going to take on the form a0. And we always use a as the letter to denote x-intercept. A y-intercept then is just kind of the opposite here. That's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And if you think about any point on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is always 0. So generically, we just call the y-intercept 0b. Now this should sound a little bit familiar because when we talked about slope-intercept form, we already wrote down that b stood for the y-intercept. So here you can see that connection. On this graph here, we have a line graph, and we can just look here and identify the intercept. So if we want to do the x-intercept first, just kind of put a little point there, and it looks like the coordinates are negative 3, 0. So if you're ever asked to give the x-intercept, you should always give it as an ordered pair because it is actually a point. Now the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, so we look there, there's a little point. That would have the coordinates 0, 2. Okay, again, give that answer as an ordered pair. Now, that's if you're given a graph. If you are given an equation, you're going to have to be able to solve for the x and the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you put a 0 in for y. That just goes back to the fact that every x-intercept has a y-coordinate of 0. Likewise, when you're solving for the y-intercept, you have to sub a 0 in for the x. And again, that's because any y-intercept has an x-coordinate of 0. So let's practice that. Our first example here is written in standard form, which if you recall, making a table of values, we didn't want it written like that, but for intercepts, it's actually okay. So we're going to start by finding the x-intercept. All we're going to do is replace a y with 0. Now, before we put the 0 in for the y, I want you to notice in front of the y, there's actually a negative 1. Anytime we're working with lines here, I always want you to put in that 1 value. It'll just help you in the long run. So here we've started to write our equation. We've got 5 fourths x minus 1, and then I'm going to replace that y with 0. Bring down the equals 5. Now, you already know that anything times 0 is 0. So essentially what's happening is when you replace the y with 0, we're just wiping out that term, and we're left with the equation 5 fourths x equals 5. Now we've got a fraction, and I know a lot of you don't like fractions, but it's good to review them every now and then. To cancel off a fraction in front of the variable, all we do is multiply by the reciprocal. So here we're going to multiply both sides by 4 fifths. And if you don't like that, you can change the 5 on the right-hand side to be a fraction by just doing 5 over 1. So on the left-hand side, the 4 fifths and the 5 fourths cancel, so we're left with x. And on the right-hand side, if you multiply straight across, you get 20 over 5, which reduces to 4. Now, you wouldn't necessarily want to say your answer is x equals 4 because, remember, our x-intercept is a point. So our x-intercept should be written as the point 4, 0. All right, secondly, we're going to find the y-intercept. To do that, we are going to plug a 0 in for the x. So we've got 5 fourths times 0 minus 1y equals 5. Now again, that zero term is just going to wipe it out, so we've got a negative 1y equals 5. To get y by itself, we're going to divide both sides by negative 1, and y equals negative 5. Again, that's not your answer. You want to go ahead and say that the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. Now, what we've actually done is we've kind of created our own little table of values, which is not in table form here. I've got two points and I can make a line just using these two points. So we're going to go ahead and label our x and y axis here, and on the x axis I have to graph the point 4, 0, and on the y axis I have to graph the point 0, negative 5. Now grab your straight edge, and again, we can't do that on the smart board, but you should do that at your seats here. Grab your straight edge and connect those two points to make a line. The same guidelines apply. You use a straight edge, you extend your line through the graph, and then you put arrows on the end. That's all there is to it.
the next example, um, this equation is in slope-intercept form. Um, it would be easy to make a table. This form is actually a little bit trickier to do a, um, the intercepts, but we're going to go with this as well. So to find the x-intercept, we have to sub a 0 in for y. And this one is the tricky part. We have 0 equals sub an x plus 21. Now, we've gotten rid of our y term, but we have a 0 on one side of the equation. And I know some of you just don't like that, but it's just another number. And now when you're solving for x, you just go ahead like you normally would. We're going to subtract 21 from both sides. And 0 minus 21 is just negative 21. Bring down your 7x. To get x by itself, you're going to divide both sides by 7. And we get negative 3 is equal to x. To write that as an ordered pair, you just do negative 3, 0. To find our y-intercept, we are going to substitute in a 0 for x. So y equals 7 times 0 plus 21. But 7 times 0 is just 0. So we're just left with y equals 21. So our y-intercept is 0, 21. Now you may notice that these numbers are rather large and we don't have 21 tick marks here. But I notice that I've got 3 and I've got 21. Both of those are multiples of 3, so let's just go by 3s. So on the x-axis I'm going to label my first couple tick marks um, with a 3 and then a 6 and then a 9 just to get it started. You don't have to label every single one. And then do the same thing on your y-axis, label 3, 6, 9. You could also write overall on the graph if you wanted to write it off somewhere, just say the graph goes by 3s. Um, that would be another acceptable way to do your scale. So now when I'm graphing a negative 3, 0, I'm not actually going over 3 spaces. I'm going over 1 space because each space, remember, remember represents 3 units. And then for 0, 21, I'm actually going to go up 7 spaces to graph that 0, 21. And that's because we've rescaled. So now take your straight edge, connect those points, make sure that your line extends through the graph, and then put your arrows on the end.